Hello and welcome to Exhibit A. Uh, today we are going to have a little bit of fun. I've got uh, Anthony with us, and Hello. we are going to talk about the divorce story. Actually, it's marriage story. the marriage story. <laughs> the it marriage should have been story. called the the, uh, the divorce story, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And let me just say this to our viewers. is uh, As a divorce attorney, it wasn't easy for me to turn on the TV and watch uh, this show because inevitably you kind of knew that they were going to be digging on the uh, – divorce attorneys, uh, but I watched it, um, and upon watching it, I was really, really touched. Uh, it was uh, something that was so profound to me. I, th thought, I thought it was a great movie that the very next day when I gave a presentation uh, of the Family Law Review, I had uh, our graphics artist, David Lindley, uh, put on our cover a uh, picture that's uh, from the, taken from the marriage story. Um, very, very good. So, Anthony, you were in uh, the presentations that, mm -hmm. that I gave right afterwards. Do you recall when I was uh, asking people if they had seen the movie? Right, yeah. It, very sh very few of the people did. Exactly. And, and one of the things I remember from that was I think everything, every family law attorney owes it to the practice and their clients to at least give this a watch. You know, subject matter aside, um, the acting was just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Adam Driver... Scarlett Johansson, um, six Golden Globe nominations. I mean, you could very easily make the argument that this might be the best movie of the year. Yeah. So that in and of itself is, is worth a watch. But I understand the reluctance. Nothing uh, makes you want to really clock out after eight hours and go home and watch a f movie about you know more client disputes and arguments and stuff like that. But um, I had the same reluctance, and, and I found that it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. So the question I posed to the audience before I gave the presentation is, is you know, how many of them watched it? Right. And I would say it was probably maybe a quarter of the folks in the room. Right. And then I just uh, opined that half of them probably felt really, you know, encouraged by the, the great uh, attorneys that were portrayed in this movie. <laughs> you know, they felt uh, energized and said, yeah, that's me. You know, and then the other half probably said, oh, my God, you know, look what we're doing to these poor innocent people by forcing exactly. them through divorces. And neither one of them, I think, are uh, really valid. But uh, then the rest of them, like you said, is I think, uh, you know, they're like, I don't want to be at work while I'm at home. <laughs> I, I, exactly. I know I, I felt that way. I still feel this way a lot of times when uh, there's police reality shows. No, that's you know, right. I yeah. hear that radio cracking, and I see the officers walking up to a house, <laughs> and I hear them talking to, you know, deranged people and sure. inflamed people, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, my back starts hurting and stuff. I thought that's the experience that I would have here, but it wasn't. Uh, right. You know, it was actually a really, like, profound, different type of a movie. Absolutely. A little part of it is kind of having to take a look in the mirror and, and see whether you fit some of the characteristics that they're portraying about these divorce attorneys and how they're making them look on TV and, and whether that's something is that's real and we're going to talk about whether that's real or, or that's you know something that's uh, blown up for Hollywood uh, that's we've talked about that before um, and and I think that's going to be a really interesting topic that we get into yeah. today yeah yeah I agree I think that we definitely need to get into how as divorce attorneys we feel about the portrayal of the divorce attorneys in the movie exactly and you know whether or not these people's experience of going through it is really similar, and that's what we'll do. We'll have a theme as to we're going to go through the movie itself, and I've uh, like you, I've got kind of a rundown. I could probably do it from memory, but just to <laughs> just to be careful, I'm going to go through the plot, um, and uh, we'll talk about you know what it, what it meant to you and what it meant to me, and whether or not these things were realistic. I have to say this is is that it was really obvious to me that they had people that were from the divorce industry alongside oh yeah there was just too many familiarities the the law in and of itself i mean I, i'm sure you would agree is absolutely spot on it's probably one of the most accurate legal movies in and of itself that they've ever made um they've covered almost everything from interstate custody to uccja to atros issues i mean a lot of these acronyms they didn't bring up in the movie but as divorce attorneys we recognize those issues as soon as they pop up yeah, and I got the feeling that not only were there divorce attorneys that were on, you know, on the side kind of coaching, right. but there must have been some people that went through divorces because this movie really shows what it's like uh, for people going through a divorce and what they see and what they experience, whether it's realistic or not, sure. what they're seeing. And you know, we'll go through that. So let's talk about uh, the beginning of this movie. So it starts off in New York City, That's right? right? And the first thing you see and hear are these two uh, main characters – uh, and what are their names is in the movie? Uh, Nicole and Charlie. Okay, I'll try to remember that. Charlie <laughs> and Nicole, okay. So they're actually talking, uh, and there's like a film of 
their marriage, basically. And like Charlie's talking about all the wonderful things about Nicole, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it's beautiful. It's like, it's something that you feel about people that you love, right? That's right. You know, you love the, all of the little nuances of the person. And then Nicole's time, and she talks like Charlie. And I'm thinking, this is going to be a movie mostly about the marriage, mm -hmm. and then it kind of ends in a divorce or what. I, it really hit me by surprise because what they start, but by the way, I should say this. Spoiler alert, okay? If any That's of my right. viewers have not seen this movie, <laughs> turn it off right now, okay? Because we're going to go through it. We're going to dissect this movie, and I don't want to ruin somebody's day by saying, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You should have given me a warning. So, <laughs> warning, we're going to go through the movie you, all the way to the end. You have been sufficiently warned That's multiple right. <laughs> times that this is going to contain multiple, multiple spoilers. Right, right. so, so the, uh, they're talking about each other, and then what we learn is, is that they have an unhappy marriage, and they're talking to... Uh, either a mediator or a therapist. It's really not sh clear as to right. what, because Charlie, I think, thinks it's therapy. Right. What do you think that, uh, what's her name again? Uh, Nicole. Nicole. What do you think Nicole thinks it is? I think Nicole thinks that, uh, well, we find out later on that she is not as enthused about the, the session as Charlie is. And, you know, therapy and mediation require, they both require the same thing. Both parties want to have to do it. And if one person feels like, and if we find out in that scene that, Nicole feels like she's being ganged up upon and uh, that the uh, either the mediator or the therapist and Charlie are taking sides against her. Well, that's naturally going to push them um, out of that session. And and she doesn't want to, you know, do the same thing and in, in reading her letter to to uh, Charlie and in, in front of him. Um, and that's something that we we would find out that, you know, is basically the, the predecessor to them ultimately filing for divorce. In my view, Anthony, what I thought was uh, that Nicole went to this session thinking this was going to be the beginning of talking about divorce, mm -hmm. where uh, I think that the uh, Charlie was hoping, you know, he was kind of in the denial stage, and he was hoping that this would be a, a chance to reconcile. What was very interesting to me is, is that Nicole didn't want to read her letter. She didn't want to express all those good things about Charlie right. during that session. Uh, what is that? Do you think that's that's a real realistic as to how people behave and act when they're splitting up? Yeah. So one of the things that we we tell our clients, and I, I tell my clients, is that I'm not I'm not a relationship expert. I'm a divorce attorney, um, but we do sense a lot of common things that uh, we notice in a lot of our cases. And one of those things is the inability to communicate, right? The inability to talk to each other in a candid and frank sort of a way without fear of retribution. So you get a sense of that in this session. Uh, Nicole's not wanting to talk or, or, or read her letter. Yeah. You know. And so we learn later on in the movie that Nicole uh, is unhappy with uh, her career in New York because she feels like she's in Charlie's shadow. Mm -hmm. And she also suspects, and her suspicions apparently turn out to be true, that he was he had a relationship with one of the people that he was uh, supervising and because, right. you know, on the stage. So... so um, I got the feeling that she didn't want to give him any hope either. You know, that yeah. she was like, if I start reading this stuff, we're going to be back in the relationship. And she was pretty hard pressed that I got to get out of here, at least temporarily, I got to get out of here. And right. so she's like, I don't want to read it. So, yeah. one of the, yeah, one of the things you talk about is what's, what's the central, you know, I guess the, the, the dispute that they have that they're not able to reconcile. Well, I think it's the idea that Nicole wants to move out to Los Angeles. She feels that Los Angeles is her home. Um, she's had a job offer out here. There's something very promising. And, and Charlie is very set in New York. He's got his theater company out there. And um, this inability to reconcile where they're going to live and where they're going to raise their son um, ultimately becomes the reason why they're a, they're, you know, they're, they decide to go forward on filing divorce. Yeah. I yeah. say they, but it's actually, we find out it's only Nicole that actually starts the process after she moves out to Los Angeles. Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, for my impression was, is, please don't divorce, you're such a beautiful couple. <laughs> you know, they start off with, you know, it, you know, they just seem like such a lovely couple and stuff, it's, you know, yeah. so the sadness seeps in right away. Absolutely. She moves to, she moves to California, Los right. Angeles, mm -hmm. right here where we're sitting, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, she gets involved in the movie industry. That's right. Meanwhile, Charlie's still back there uh, producing, and he's a, he looks like he's a workaholic. He's a guy that uh, he's very buttoned up in a way. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a tall, uh, you know, handsome, soft-spoken kind of, you know, l a loving guy from uh, the outside, but inside it's like he's really driven with his, with his work. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you go out to California, and, you know, I'll be out there to check on you, but yeah. he's thinking she's coming back, right? Right, exactly. And, and we find out later on that, you know, um, you know, Adam Driver's character, Charger, Charlie, is actually so good, he gets a MacArthur grant 
And they don't just hand those out. You have to really be at the top of your field. So um, managing that theater company and being a director really uh, was his central focus in life. And maybe um, his marriage and his relationship kind of fell uh, second to that. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So she's out here. Uh, it's sunny, you know, and it's uh, what we, you know, love about California. <laughs> lots of space, lots right? Lots of space. I didn't lots really, of space. That, that, was a, that kept going on through the movie. Yeah. And, you know, I come from the Midwest, and I'm going to tell you, you want to see some space? Yeah. Go to the Midwest or there go to Canada go. or something. Here in L.A., I don't see that much space, <laughs> but apparently compared to New York, I guess there is. Right. So they keep telling her, all of her friends and all the, all the people that she works with, is, hey, you know, it makes sense for him to come out here because there's so much space. Well, he doesn't want to come out, right? He does not. Okay, and so now what she does is she goes and starts interviewing uh, attorneys. That's right. Right, and uh, we later learn that she, and this is later on, way later on in the movie, we learn that she interviewed at least 11 different divorce attorneys. That's right. So, th so the next uh, thing we see uh, Nicole doing is, is going to a Westside uh, fancy yep. uh, attorney. That's with the, uh, the coffee machine in there yeah. and the... Uh, you know, fuzzy pillows, and, and I mean, I, I think they got that office, like, absolutely spot on. And, and she sat on the couch next to her, and she started hugging her and all of those things. And, you know, it was it was uh, sappy, but I think it was realistic. I do right. think that some of the attorneys uh, are, you know, really good at bringing in folks like that, you know, and stuff. Sure. And it just didn't seem authentic to me. And so that would be my criticism of her. The acting was Fabulous. I mean, I can't imagine um, <laughs> doing a better job of of acting in that caricature. You know, somebody that's like that. I mean, it, they, I know that's what they were trying to hit on was the was the manipulation sure. and the seductiveness of coming in. And what was telling is, is you know, she's hugging her, and and, and uh, uh, the the uh, Nicole is crying, and at the right. end she goes, "And I think that he was cheating on me." And she goes, "That bastard." <laughs> <laughs> You knew the deal was signed exactly. right at that point, right? Right. And then I think we're going to get into two more consultations as well. And and you can really kind of put a, a stark difference in between each one and the different approaches that each attorney takes in terms of trying to build that relationship with the client and, and while at the same time advising them of what their legal options are. One of the things that um, Nicole's consultation was completely devoid of was any legal discussion. They didn't really talk about any of the legal strategy at all. Um, it was solely for the purpose of, again, building that attorney-client, you know, relationship, personal relationship, um, and just seeing if they would even get along. Yeah. Right? Well, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> because we, kn we later yeah. learned that uh, Nora's expensive. Right, I mean, exactly. She's basically making uh, – it's so expensive that uh, Nicole's mother is financing it and mm -hmm. you know, putting her house up for sale, whatever it was. I mean, it was, it was pretty nasty. But – now let's let's talk about the legal issue. You said yeah. it wasn't discussed. And before we talk about uh, Charlie's consultation, which sure. was great, but let's talk about the legal issue because uh, the legal issue dealt with what? Uh, it's an interstate custody dispute. Um, I mean, at the crux is a dissolution, but the main dispute we find out is how are they going to share custody and visitation of their son? Okay, so I think that this was put in the movie because it's one of the most heart-wrenching things to see is, is when children is. are being separated from their parents. Right. Um, they're, they're amongst the, the most difficult cases that I have personally worked on and I'm sure you work yeah. on. Um, it, it's just so difficult to reconcile two parents being in two different places at the same time while exercising custody of one, one or two children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I also think that uh, they had to get something that was heart-wrenching to the point where they couldn't make legal sense. No. Because what this was was is a... Uh, like you said, it was an interstate uh, jurisdiction case. Correct. And what the viewers should know from the real lawyers <laughs> is, is that uh, UGIA, the Uniform Jurisdiction Enforcement uh, Act, doesn't allow people to do what's called forum shopping. Right. And the home state in this case was New York, right? Because that's, that's where the child had lived for six months prior to filing for the divorce. At least that's, that's the impression we got. Now, you know, they could have made it a little more fuzzy and have them, had them living out in L.A. for six months or more. But the impression I got is she filed as soon as she uh, met with uh, or shortly, Nora. Yeah, or shortly, shortly after. thereafter, right? Yeah. And that has to reconcile with another uh, section of the law, and, and it's actually on the back of the summons, called the Automatic Temporary Restraining Order, right? Yeah, yeah, so they file over here. Now, California would have jurisdiction. Well, actually, again, you know, if she files as quickly as we think, at right. least what I thought, uh, she would have to file legal separation first because if she wasn't here for six months sure. prior to filing, then New York would have had jurisdiction. Right. So, so I think there was a little play with the law there, but you know they 
that's what movies do, you know. And so I, I, get, I was forgiving of it, <laughs> but the lawyer in me was going, come on, man, Charlie, fight right. the jurisdiction. Get that thing back to New York. That's right. We find out also later on that, that Charlie doesn't really do a good job of, of uh, paying attention to uh, his deadlines and filing a prompt response. So usually when you're challenging jurisdiction, it has to be done within that period by which you file your first, first paper. Um, and it very well could have been that he lapsed and he didn't act, act uh, promptly on his right to quash these proceedings and seek to transfer the jurisdiction back to New York. Um, that's one way that they may, might have gotten around it. Um, again, these are more technical family law legal issues, yeah. um, but the substance of the dispute was, again, how are you going to exercise shared custody of a child that's in California when arguably the child was raised in New York? Yeah, right? and uh, you know he may have subjected himself to California jurisdiction as well because yeah. there was no talk between him and his attorneys about knocking out jurisdiction. So sure. let's talk about that now. The other two uh, consultations. What I loved about this here is is that um, Ray is uh, a bulldog, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that opening uh, s statement just floored me. It was like, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you asked me the smart questions. Have you got any stupid <laughs> questions? <laughs> ask me. <laughs> I mean, I'm $900 an hour or whatever. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, that, that was really cool. But, you know, again, th you know, there's no talk about jurisdiction. He goes through, you know, he's, he's telling his associate there, he's like, hey, do this, do this. we got to mm -hmm. do that. But uh, there's no discussion about fighting jurisdiction. Right. So what were your impressions about, about that scene? Um, so, again, we see a stark contrast between Ray Liotta's character and, and Nora um, and their ability to relate to the client and, and um, make the client feel like they're being heard. Ray's uh, character uh, really w is getting ready to go to war, right? He's accumulating all his weapons and thinking 5, 10, 20 steps ahead. He's not really explaining the, the process and why he needs to do these things to the client, He's just kind of thinking, you know what? He's going to retain me anyways. I need, uh, you know, fifty thousand dollar retainer and X, Y, and Z, and we're going to do this and this and this. Um, that's one way of doing it, and you know, certainly clients will retain on that basis, uh, and ju or just reputation alone. We find out that he's a very uh, well respected and high caliber attorney, um, but that's not no what uh, people are always looking for. Um, and Charlie and wasn't looking. Charlie for was not looking for that, and and we'll see the next consultation that. They, uh, he goes to and, and the absolute difference in that. And it's just I, I really enjoy um, seeing how different these consultations are um, and their ability of the client. And we, it's, it's great because we don't normally see what happens when the uh, potential client walks out the door, whether they feel like, you know, this is a great firm or, you know, I didn't feel really comfortable and things like that. And we really get to see it from their perspective. Yeah. Yeah. What I saw with this uh, particular consultation, it, it really – Kind of creeped me out a little bit to the extent that you've got the uh, rich and poor attorney. Mm -hmm. You know, you have uh, uh, the attorney who's kind of like, you know, working outside of his house, you know, and, right. you know, and isn't really talking about uh, fighting and protecting uh, the rights of Charlie, but more like, hey, let's let's just get the, get along. Seems like a really ethical attorney. Yeah, I, I think um, the difference is, is uh, Alan Alda's character is – obviously at a different stage of his litigation career. And he's been through many, many battles. He's seen how they turned out. And one of the recommendations he has right off the bat is, let's try to settle this. You're going to save yourself a lot of headaches and a lot of time and a lot of turmoil if you just find a way to meet in the middle and settle it. And that's something we, we even tell our clients, you know, we should really explore possible ways of settling this in, you know, in the event that you're not able to come to an agreement. Um, it could be potentially, you know, expensive and protracted and things like that. But we do see uh, what the the years of practice has done, has done to all in all this character, um, where he's looking at these types of situations in a, you know, a, a, a very different perspective than uh, either, you know, Ray Liotta or Nora um, in that original consultation. So did you like this attorney? I did, yeah. I, you know what? My first thought when I was when I was watching this movie is how great would he be as a mediator? Right. Yeah. If he yeah. was a mediator and he was mediating these two parties, I think they probably would have been able to settle the case right off the bat. Um, but, uh, you know, that it was a different circumstance. And he ends up going with with we find out his name is Bert Spitz. Um, and, and Bert Spitz is very obviously something that I don't know if you got it. I got a very Valley vibe from him, you know, north of the, yeah. the 101 yeah. uh, vibe from from Bert Spitz. And 
he's got a different approach uh, than than the other two attorneys that he's talked to, and he's the one that uh, Charlie, at least for the uh, outset, goes with. Okay, know? and so he finds his attorney. He doesn't mm-hmm. go with the big bulldog. Uh, he goes with Bert, and right. then they uh, find themselves in a settlement conference, a voluntary settlement conference. That's right. Yeah. And in the voluntary settlement conference, there's no uh, retired judge. There's no paid mediator. It's just uh, what we call a uh, a four-way, four right? Way. Yep. Okay. So, what did you see there? <laughs> I see. Uh, I well, okay. Again, I, I, y- you know, we 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 know that Alan Alda is a a veteran season attorney because uh, one of the things that we notice is uh, war stories. Older attorneys love to trade war stories. Uh, <coughs> excuse <They> l- me. <laughs> love to trade war stories, um, and they also look forward to lunch, and and that's something I think caught. Even me off guard was how quickly these family law attorneys can go from, you know, being in the state of battle to completely different, turned off minds that what are we going to get for lunch um, mode. And, and that's, you know, I think something that that people aren't necessarily used to is that you know, we're, we're human, too. We have to eat and we have to think about, you know, uh, uh, how we're going to sustain ourselves through the day and what the settle- second part of the day is going to look like as well. Yeah, and there's a settlement personality and there's a litigation mm-hmm. personality. We saw the settlement personalities. Everybody's relaxed. They're in the right. room. I, now, this was m- one of the times where I was like, in, through the consumer's eyes, what they're seeing, because we've <laughs> all been in mediations. And, right. you know, we know a lot of the attorneys, it, you know, most of the attorneys in the area here, So, and most of them are friends or we're friendly with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's kind of how you operate. But the, but the customers were looking at them and going, man, what is going on? This is my, my money, my time. <laughs> That's right. I mean, Bert started telling a story, right. and Charlie said what? Are you billing me for this joke? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're looking at this and go, you guys are so relaxed, but this is our lives. Right. You know? And I think that's that's kind of an, an important part of the movie is, mm-hmm. is that the attorneys are in an industry and, you know, the product are the clients and the clients feel like sometimes that they're being lost in the shuffle. You yeah, know, right. and here it is, is they're like talking about food and stuff. And it's not a jolly experience. I mean, Charlie is hating it. Right. That's right. And and these g- people are acting jolly. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that was a really, really good scene. I mean, I think, it, you know, despite the work itself, these are people that you work with on, uh, you know, almost a daily basis. You, you have relationships. You uh, understand the way the other people work. And and just because you're working on a case together doesn't mean that you're not able to shut it off and and deal with things like where are we going to get for lunch? Um, yeah. And, and yeah, that, that's something that was really, really great to see. Yeah. In my opinion, I, I, it's just sad that uh, a lot of times clients don't understand that with, when you've got people that are very experienced and they're friendly with each other, you're right. more likely to come up with a reasonable settlement. Absolutely, you know, and yeah. stuff. And they don't like it a lot of times, you know, but, but it's just it gets so, – sometimes I don't have the parties in the same room because of the fact that when they see me being nice – to the other side, sure. they think I'm not fighting and protecting them, but I'm using my skill and my charm in whatever I have to do in order to try to settle the case. That's you know, right. Yeah, the you, psychology, right? You use every single tool in your toolbox. Again, um, the goal is to get the best outcome for your client, and that if that means you know pulling on your personal relationship with opposing counsel to maybe try to get a concession here or there, or or um, you know working out a, a, a collegial environment by which you can actually communicate with each other. You know, if you shut down the the settlement down right there, nothing gets done, yeah. right? So part of being able to settle cases is the ability to uh, be professional and and work interpersonally with these people that you you deal with on such a frequent basis. Yeah. So yeah. they don't settle though. They don't s- settle, and they no. don't say why really. Because next thing we know, I mean, they're I don't know if it's the next scene or but after this scene, right. they're in court. Right. So okay. let me ask you. Uh, were there problems with that scene? No, I I loved it. and and we did a full episode on on how Hollywood does courtrooms, um, and I think they they hit it right on the head. Um, you know, not every single you, you're going to be in the same courtroom as every other person that that's going through their dissolution, and um, some of them are going to be able to afford, uh, you know, really expensive legal counsel. Some of them are not, um, and unfortunately, the court doesn't get to decide how they divvy up their time. Um, so in order to be fair to everyone, they oftentimes will have to send counsel out to either talk to each other and try to work out a settlement so that they can work on other cases. Um, one of the things we touched on previously is that there's usually 20 or 20 or 25 cases on the calendar that morning. You so notice how they showed it right at the end? Exactly. I mean, it was very realistic when, right. they, when they panned the audience. Right, right. right. Yeah, and then, um, you know, typically – uh, in our experience, the the ones with the attorneys do get a little bit more attention and, and a little bit time from the court, 
Um, and, and unfortunately, what that does mean is that the self-represented litigants, their cases often don't get as much of attention. So the court has to balance that uh, in the way that it can. And we, we see that in this case, they get assigned to a 730 evaluation. Right? Yeah. So, so before we get into the 730 evaluation, which, yeah. which is a court-appointed expert to, to help the judge determine what the appropriate custody is, that's what we'll be talking about next. My impressions of this was uh, this is when things break down in the courtroom. It's a Jerry Springer show. Uh, the judge was not uh, really getting in, in the middle of it and saying, hey, sure. stop it, because, right. because they, these attorneys lost control. They were arguing with, each, with other, each other, and it was a very personal, nasty experience, uh, probably longer than I've ever seen it. I, don't, I think it was, wasn't realistic as to how long they were arguing and bickering with each That's other, right, yeah. but it's Hollywood. You know? But it captured what does happen in court sometimes that I hate is when people let down their professionalism and they start really that nastiness back and forth, and it becomes a, a real power struggle between you know, power attorneys sometimes, right. right? Well, we find out that the, the judge is brand new to the bench, and, and how accurate is, is yeah. having a brand new judge to the bench that isn't necessarily... Um, quite at the point where they're controlling their courtroom uh, 100% yet. And, and I think that that's something that we see a lot is is new family law judges um, getting to the bench, getting cases that they've never seen before, and trying to work them out. And, and I, I thought that was really, really yeah. great. Yeah. I, I do think the producers um, sat in court a lot yeah. to, to get that scene because – uh, what the judge said was, look, you know, I'm sure that you guys have a lot of resources mm -hmm. and you can continue doing this, you know, but we got other people. That sounds like it just came out of a courtroom, a real yeah. courtroom when he said that. I've, I've heard that so many times. You right, know? right. Yeah. What about the courtroom itself, the way that it was designed and decorated and the carpet and yeah. even the hallways in the courtroom? It, it's exactly it was central. It was yeah, the central courthouse. Exactly yeah. spot on. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay, so they uh, they're ordered to participate in a child custody evaluation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and we find out that they ultimately go with a uh, child custody evaluator by the name of Martha Kelly. Okay, and we know that people are really really afraid about the experience they're going to have mm -hmm. when they meet with the custody evaluator because this person has got a lot of power, right, and a lot of influence, and they're going to be going over to the uh, home normally and doing little visits with That's the right. parent and the child, and how do you get ready for that? Right. Uh, Charlie's attorney told him what? Um, I, I think make it look like it's a, it's a home, right? We Actually, I think Barry Spitz at the beginning tells him, get an apartment in Los Angeles so that it'll give you a, an edge in the custody, yeah. right? And, yeah. and that's actually true. You, you do want a, a home base that you can set up and, and have it be a home to the child and, and be able to exercise your custodial time there. Yeah, we're missing something because you just said Barry Spitz. So Charlie fires Oh, that's right. Bert, I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And yeah. he goes with his own asshole. Right. Right. <laughs> and, you know, th that we've seen a lot of times where people think, hey, you know, it's like it's nuclear warfare. Right. You know, I've got to have my own jerk in the courtroom and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, so anyways, they're in this evaluation and, uh, and uh, you see him. Uh, getting prepared for it, and then she comes through the door. My God, I mean, that could happen. I mean, you know, you, you're nervous. Somebody comes in. They're they're not really giving you a signal as to whether they like you or they don't like you, and you could have a bad day, right? right so could. what happens during this visit? They, uh, I mean, I think uh, Charlie has a bad day, exactly that. Um, uh, I love the way Martha Kelly portrayed a, a child custody evaluator. I um, um, I think that it was absolutely spot yeah. on. They're, I thought she might be a real one. Yeah, I had to I, go back and check that it was really. I think an the actress. demeanor was her demeanor is, yeah. is almost spot on. It's a little bit you know you know quirky, kind of funky, but um, that's literally what their job is is to sit there and, and be a fly on the wall and to observe. And as awkward as it is to have someone sitting there as while you're trying to have dinner with your son, um, that's what their role is is to see the relationship between the parent and child, and to uh, ultimately you know process that information, distill it down and pre, uh, present that information to the court uh, in order to assist it in making its custody decision. So I yeah. thought that was that was absolutely great. Yeah, it was yeah. very realistic. Now, um, what, while she's there, she looks up at the wall, and she's a, she's a hole in the wall. That's right. How, does, how did that hole get in the wall? We find out that, that uh, Charlie and Nicole uh, had met before, and they had an argument, probably one of the best scenes of acting, I think, have been, that have ever been captured, just the raw emotion of it. Um, and, you know, Charlie gets upset. He punches a hole in the wall, never gets around to fixing it before the child custody evaluation. And y you got to you got to know that played a part in the decision and, and the recommendations of that child custody evaluator, because they'll spot every little minor thing. I mean, minor or major thing 
um, and incorporate that as a part of the report. Anthony, when I saw that, um, I don't know about you, but I was starting to think, okay, what's next? I mean, mm -hmm. he puts his fist through the wall, and it got really nasty. I mean, we, you know, these people were saying things to get to the core of each other, right? Yeah. Just as mean and nasty Just as they could possibly in. be. Yeah. So two things about that scene is one is is that I thought, okay, she's going to go get a restraining order, <laughs> and it's over with, baby, because he's committed domestic violence. And now he's got to go. She just has to go into court and get that. That's right. The movie didn't have that happen. I was surprised by that. That would have been a you whole know? another layer of, of yeah. headache, I think, on top of the whole entire yeah. thing. I thought it was over with for him. At yeah, that point. exactly. But I mean, that that was definitely shock. But it's it's a part of the emotions that were going through the parties in that in that situation that he was basically so overcome with with um, disappointment and anger and and um, that he put his fist through the wall. Yeah. yeah. The other thing about that scene, which I agree with you, was great acting, and it was really important for that movie, right. is, is that the parties finally got it out of their system. Right. I mean, they finally were able to have a real fight and talk about what was really hurting them to the point where Charlie gets down and he starts whimpering. I mean, he's yeah. crying and stuff. I feel that in a lot of my cases that people need to get their pound of flesh. They need to get it out of the system. There's a cathartic thing that goes on. And I always use the example that sometimes uh, people will settle the case week one, right? Sure. And then guess what? They're in court six months later fighting over something really, really small, but they mm -hmm. got to have that last fight, you know? Right. And I think that they settled it because of the fact that they had that fight. Right. I think that it took everything out of them, and they were just tired and exhausted. Charlie goes through the evaluation. It ain't looking good. Right. The next we know, what happens? Well, they uh, they they do the well. We don't get to see the the presentation of the report. There's usually a court hearing. Yeah. Uh, when that and and ultimately at the end, uh, we find out that uh, Nicole probably gets primary custody. Uh, Charlie is uh, going to move out to Los Angeles and take a position at UCLA. And the question is, well, why did they do all of this if that was the end goal anyways? Should they have listened to Bert? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, Bert was right. Exactly. Bert was right. And, and we, we hear the, uh, the note that uh, they weren't able to read during the therapy session finally get read um, when, when the son finds it. And you got to wonder, what if that therapy session went better? What if they stuck it out through therapy? What if they communicated, like you said? A lot of the times, you just need to get it out. And usually, therapy is a good place to do that. Hopefully, you're not screaming at each other and punching holes in walls in order to get there. But um, you, it just makes you wonder. Maybe they try a different therapist. Maybe they try mediation at a different office. Um, they would have saved themselves a whole lot of time and money uh, if they were able to work out their differences at the very outset. Yeah. Yeah. One of the final scenes, uh, there's like a birthday party or something, if I recall right. Sure. And, and the uh, attorney, the, uh, what's her name again? Nora. Nora. She's there. Yep. And so she's really gotten a good, real strong <laughs> relationship. With, yep. When, but you get the feeling that Nicole's kind of like not really liking how aggressive she is. No, I think I think one of the things she says is she, she stuck him. Just at the end for a little bit more uh, custodial time, just so she wouldn't be able to say they got 50 50. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, it, it, you really got to wonder at that point is it really worth it? Are you, are you now uh, taking from your client to improve your position now? And that's not what we try to do. We try to improve the position of our clients. Yeah, you don't tell the client what's good for them you exactly. know, in that respect. I mean, I mean, you do make suggestions, but when it comes to something like that, you know, you want to encourage. Uh, people to act like adults and think about the children, and she just wanted to impress her upon her client that you got one last one, right? That's right. Know? Look at look yeah. at what I did for you. Yeah. This is why I'm so great. It, yeah. it was really more about me than yeah. rather about you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and you know the I think the look on Nicole's face um, really kind of told everything. It's like, well, why I didn't ask for that, you know? Um, and it just kind of shows that these these types of disputes kind of have a way of taking a life of their own and really kind of getting out of control, even out of your own hands, to the point that, yeah, you're now in a stage where you're settling the case, mm -hmm. but your attorneys are still going at it and just trying to get that little little bit more uh, uh, of an advantage just to kind of say that, you know, look at all the stuff I've done for you. Yeah, you so. just said something that I was thought about when I saw that movie, too, is right. how it starts off with they're not sure that they're getting a divorce. I mean, no. you know, Nicole wants to leave New York, uh, she wants some space. She wants some time away from Charlie. Right. And the thing just kind of spirals, man. It, it, and it really gets does. nasty. And it gets to the point where it's like they're in a universe that they never I envisioned themselves. And these two people don't belong there. And it's that nasty thing that they're in. Yeah. So 
I, I saw that, and I do see a lot of cases spiral out of control because of the the emotions. And I think you know a lot of times the attorneys fuel that, and that's what you may have seen in this movie. Right. You know, this, especially Nora fueling the fire a little bit. Yeah, right. Exactly. So so at the end of this movie, what, describe the last scene. Well, we do Halloween. Um, they they go to a Halloween party together. This is the second uh, time that they have a Halloween, and um, Nicole stops to tie Charlie's shoes for him, and I thought that was just absolutely amazing that despite everything that happens, that they're able to get to a point where they're actually um, able to communicate and, and function together as co-parents. That, that was just a, a nice way to end a movie that was overall pretty sad. Yeah. Um, just that kind of little bit of hope that Me too. going saw, forward, that, yeah, yeah, going forward that they would be able to uh, um, be co-parents for their son. And really, that's ultimately the goal, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd like that too because um, you know, as I don't think it's very realistic for many of the cases we see. No, I don't see these people tying each other's shoes and you know doing nice things to each other. Sometimes when it gets that nasty, that just sure. continues on for a lifetime. But right. it was very sweet, and that's what we really hope for. I mean, we that's, definitely hope. For and that, on occasion, yeah. I've seen that. It's like, oh my god, I love it. You know, so I really like the happy ending on it too, like that. Surprising, very, very surprising. Very surprised. We believe it or not, divorce attorneys are not out to try to get people to hate each other and and alienate from the apartment. Well, some. The, 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 some some are out there. Cuz what about what about Nora? Yeah, I mean there, there's maybe Nora's Nora, out there. Nora's out there, but I I think at least for for the majority of them right. and I I sincerely hope the majority is to get parents back together um, to a point where they can function civilly, not necessarily like agree with everything the other person says obviously you're going to have disagreements. But not hurt the kids. But right? not hurt the kids exactly. Yeah. And and that's the ultimate goal I think out of out of our profession is to um, is to try to kind of rebuild uh, what can be rebuilt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, your concluding remarks, young man. What, <laughs> do, what do you think about the movie? I think I think uh, Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver both need Oscars. Um, I thought the movie was absolutely great. I I really appreciated the attention to detail in terms of the law and the kind of overall arching themes of you know going through separation with a child. Um, you know. Like, might have shed a tear or two and because you know we don't get to see a lot of the other side of these types of cases and to kind of know what goes beyond behind the scenes when they're not sitting in your office um it really tugs at your heart it really kind of breaks your heart to to see what these people have to go through yeah yeah you know and i i'm going to say conclude with this is i think that it's a wake-up call for uh, family law attorneys mm -hmm. that don't get what the real mission is that we're here to help people right and uh that you know, uh, it's not about us. It's about helping folks. Mm -hmm. And also for all of us to see what it's like for the consumer. You know, whether, like I said before, is, is whether their perception is right or wrong, we need to be aware of what they're seeing. You know, right. when they see us bringing up the menu and being jolly during a sad time like yeah. that, you know, those are little things that are, that are sensitive and stuff, you know. And I, so, you know, it's a it's good movie. Um, I, I tease that it's got to be a training film yeah. for, for us, but but it was good. And I really appreciate your input. You were awesome today. Oh, thank you so much. It's been great. I've been wanting to talk about this movie for a very yeah. long time just because I had so many thoughts, and, and obviously you see all my notes here. Yeah, so. yeah you yeah. were well prepared. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for uh, joining us on Exhibit A, and we look forward to seeing you next time.